Hey, I'm really super excited today because we're doing the Zest Zest TV episode right here in downtown New Haven at the new classic French creamery down in Laurie Street, New Haven. It's Yolande's Bistro uh, and Creepery, and I'm just going to go in there and talk to the owners and do a video episode right in here. So this is Zap Zap, and you're watching Zap Zap TV, the show that brings you a dash of passion to the perfect blend of ingredients for your success in business and in life. We'll see you inside. This is going to be a super awesome episode of Zest Zest TV. Um, this is an episode that we actually have a food segment because uh, we're at a restaurant here in New Haven. Uh, the reason I like to do uh, this food segments is because not only because I get to be in the kitchen, but I also wanted to feature the business side of uh, you know the food industry. The connection between me and food is not because I love to eat, huh, but because I've also had experience building my own food business. In the past, I've had a, a small caring business that catered to uh, my culture food, which is Malaysia. So I had a small community that I catered to. Uh, what I found out is that, you know, I connect with the business and also the fact that I love doing it because it's my passion. So that's why I like to do the food segments, not only because, you know, I love to eat, but of or, or, and also because I wanted to share what all the small business owners, the restaurateurs are doing in their business that could probably help other people who are doing the same thing, you know, because I think I've not seen much of uh, this kind of um, education or training out there on videos. This is, you know, what I love to do. So I like to go out there and meet the people who are in the front line building the business, the restaurateurs. So today I actually have, um, um, we're here in New Haven. We're talking to uh, Yolande Spistro. And right now here with me, I have Yolande Lacan, the a restaurateur and also the owner of Yolande Spistro and Creep Free right here in New Haven, Connecticut. Welcome, Yolan, and thank you for having us here. Thank you, Zeph. It's so much fun to have you here with us. I love talking to people in the food business because I've been in... Um, in the past, a couple of years ago, I started my own mini catering business. Also, I did a lot of cupcakes. I did a very traditional culture, Malaysian food. So I had my own following and I know how hard it is to actually, you know, stand up for hours in the kitchen, you know, but it's all about food. What makes it really worthwhile is that passion because I love doing it. You know, I love to see the smiling faces. You know, I enjoy the rewards when they say, oh, it's super awesome. So I know how it is, you know, when when it comes to food business it's all about the passion so maybe you can tell me a little bit more how you actually came about with this passion I think that every decision you make from the time you're a child builds on your experiences in the future mm -hmm. and I think that I had a magical childhood wow. growing up in the hotel industry in the food industry as magical as it was, it was hard work, and there was never any doubt that if you don't have passion, it doesn't work. So over the years, everything has been building and growing and getting me to this point. And you're absolutely right. It's passion. It's making sure that the plates go out the way you envision them going out. It's stopping and chatting with the guests and making sure that you made them happy. As you were discussing at some other point, you have to have passion and love what you're doing. Otherwise, mm -hmm. six and seven days a week, 12 and 14 hours a day, it's just not worth it. So it's got to be fun along the way. Absolutely. Uh, that was September 6th or 7th. September 21st, we signed a lease. September 23rd, I had an impromptu gathering of focus group friends from the hotel world, from my college days. My family came up from Florida. Um, my friends from The Grove, my friends from Toastmasters, my acquaintances and friends from oh, wow. the French Club, we all gathered and we talked about paint colors wow. and we talked about menu fonts and menu items because the menu was 90% done. I had already had a business plan because I knew what I wanted to do. I had to tweak it because this was a different size, but I had everything ready to go. Mm. 
so I heard you actually had a unique way of renaming your restaurant. It's pretty exciting, actually. I read it on your blog, and I was like, "Really? Is that how she really names her restaurant?" That's that really quick, how I named my quick New Haven minute, right? Yeah, quick, yeah. So you, tell us about that story. That's awesome. The naming of the restaurant is rather funny. <laughs> we had that brunch. Mm -hmm. I had about 35 people here in the building. Mm -hmm. We slapped up some color samples on the walls. <laughs> and everybody said, so Yolanda, what's going to be the name of the restaurant? I said, well, I have a couple of names in mind. And here's what they are. What do you think? And unanimously, 35 people. We don't like that. <laughs> How long did it take you to think about that name? Well, you know, it's a process. You right. throw out a lot of names, you brainstorm, you try to find the right name. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, all of them, I don't like that name. Okay, fine. <laughs> you come up with a name. So the, in their little focus groups, they all started chattering, and mm -hmm. the folks from the French club came to me first. Okay. And they pulled me aside, and they said, we have a couple of spelling errors on your menu. I said, yep, I know. My mother's already pointed them out. Thank you. <laughs> And we really like this, and we're not crazy about that. And did you think about this? And, oh, by the way, we think the name of the restaurant should be Yolande's. And I said in my head, uh-huh, yep, thank you. Now go back and sit down. <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. But in my head, that's exactly what went through my head. Right. And I said, oh, that's very sweet. That's not going to happen, but thank you. <laughs> and then my hotel friends came around the corner, mm -hmm. and they said, Lacan, Yolande, Che Yolande, we absolutely think it needs to be that. And these are people I've known a long, long time. time. Mm -hmm. And I looked at them and I said, you're nuts, it's not going to happen. And then I went and was chatting with the folks at the bar, which were some of my friends from um, Toastmasters and right. from The Grove. Uh -huh. And they all came up and said the same thing. And I said, what is going on? And I shipped my mother and sister back to Florida and my best friend back to New York and everybody dispersed for the day. And I got home and I started putting notes together of everything that had gone on that day. Mm -hmm. We came back to the name and it was Sunday night and I needed to apply for my liquor license first thing Monday morning. So I had to have a business name. Right. And I wasn't happy with anything that had come up. And when I was a little girl, I was probably eight, nine or ten years old, my father, Papa, had put a menu item on his menu mm -hmm. named after my sister Jacqueline <laughs> like any good little girl <laughs> what about me oh, I'm, I'm older I'm the yes, older yes. one <laughs> you forgot about me absolutely mm -hmm. and papa said to me Yolant your mother and I did not make your life easy when we gave you your name <laughs> here in the US right how many times has anybody said your name correctly on the first go round Think of your first day of school. Think of all of your teachers and uh -huh. your new friends. Does anybody say your name correctly? Mm -hmm. No, Papa. <laughs> and he said, you will never have anything named after you in the United States. 30 years later, 35 years later, that's still are. going through my head. So when everybody said that, I said, there's just no way. And I got into bed. It was 11.30 or so, and I still didn't have a name for the restaurant. And I said, forget it. I'm going to bed. Whatever happens first thing in the morning, that'll be the name of the restaurant. It'll be meant to be. My phone dings at me at about 7.15 in the morning. And I turn over in bed, and I look at it, and it's a text from my sister, Jacqueline. In carpool. Yolans is the name. We all agree. I wasn't awake yet, and I looked at it and I said, first thing in the morning, whatever happens, it's meant to be. First thing in the morning, Yolande's Bistro and Crapery. Wow. So that's really how it was named. Wow. I mean, isn't it awesome sometimes when you think about it too much, you know, it doesn't happen, and then you just put it out there and speak to the universe, and it comes to you. It does. You know? 
you know, being uh, new in the business, you know, uh, we all know we have to do marketing on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And in the 21st century, even though you have a, you know, a, a storefront, uh, a restaurant like yours, you actually have to have a presence online too. So among the things that are famous right now is like social media marketing, you know, blogging. Um, maybe you can share a little, more, a little bit more about what you have done in your business to market Yolan's Bistro and Creepery. You know, what have you done online and offline? Because I know it's not only online. It has to have an offline offline community that supports you too you know so maybe you can share a little bit more about what have uh, you know what you have done and you know um, has worked good or effectively for you I read somewhere recently that you should have 10 irons in the fire in regards to different ways of marketing at any given time your business never going to happen for me but having said that I do think that I take a look at every type of marketing that there is out there. For Yolan's Bistro and Crapery, we have concentrated on the Facebook. We have a web page up and running. It's not as perfect as I would like it to be, but it's up and running. I do a little bit of Twitter and I do a little bit of Instagram. There is a Pinterest page for the restaurant, which I've done nothing with. I just I don't have the time to keep up with it. And I, there's a four square, which I've done nothing with. We've got them out there and, and going, but we haven't really done anything with them. Um, I think networking and PR really are your best avenues because it's all word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Having said that, how do you reach them becomes another issue. So I think the most consistent place that we are active is our Facebook page. We've posted menus, and boy, was that a treat, because that's not an easy way thing no. to do on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, we've posted our hours, we've posted our information there, and we post all of our specials and our goings on. Um, the web page has all of that information as well, but it doesn't have the specials, and it's not as timely. Um, I cross-promote my blog at theinkeepersdaughter.com with yolansbistro.com, as well as both of those on Facebook. I try to remember that when I'm taking pictures of dishes to do it on Instagram because if I do it on Instagram it'll push out through Twitter and Instagram at the same time but because my Facebook page is a business page and not my personal it won't push out that way so that's two steps and trying to cut down on those steps is always very important when as I said we're doing six other things mm. at the same time mm -hmm. So uh, I think that those are all avenues that we're working on. I, I am trying to stress um, the public relations more than anything else because I think you get more bang for the buck on it. Um, we've had some lovely articles printed that have done a lot for us. Uh, traditional advertising has not done a whole lot. Traditional print advertising has not done a whole lot for me. I am working with the Online Merchants Association, Ninth Square Merchants Association, at doing some cooperative advertising. And we have a campaign going on now through the middle of March with the new subscription television over the computer, Tivoli, mm. for the Yale undergrads. And we're co-oping that marketing piece with nine, eight other merchants here in the Ninth Square. Restaurants, um, salons, boutiques, jewelry stores, a little bit of everything. We're looking forward to doing more of those type of cooperative advertising because those glossy magazines and, and radio and is very expensive and the small business person can't afford to do it on their own. Um, and then the other thing that is very controversial <laughs> and not at all something that I enjoy doing but in today's market is kind of necessary is the group on living social those buy special deals for the merchants using them it really is about exposure um, and not overusing them because they don't make any money so you have to pick and choose and decide where you want that exposure because unfortunately it's far more you you get the attention of far more, far more diverse, larger groups of people than an ad in the local newspaper will ever give you. 
You know, Yolan, I really like what you said earlier about, you know, how you actually are using social media marketing. You know, yes, there's a lot of a lot of social media platforms, social networking platforms, Pinterest, you know, Google Plus, you name it all. I mean, it, it, it can be overwhelming, right? And you need almost a different team to do this, right? But um, you're right about ha having to do all that, at least do something that works for you. And I'm glad that you said Facebook works for you because I think many restaurants find that Facebook is the platform that they can actually maintain easily because everyone's on Facebook. Um, and I also appreciate that you said you actually had to take the time to build your own networking community. You know, you have to go out there and network with people because for some reason people think, you know, you live in this technology age, social media is the answer. You know, you just go online, have a blog and people will come and flock to your pages but if you and i know it's not like that you it's know not. it still comes down to word of mouth you know we're gonna eat something we're all gonna post oh my god look at the crafts it's awesome at your last bistro everybody needs to um pull together you know it's a community thing you know you it's really word of mouth both online and offline mm -hmm. and you know a lot of networking it comes down to building that personal relationship that's why in all my classes too i teach high tech high touch marketing strategies because you know we live in 21st century we're all about ipads we're all about tablets we're all about the phones but we cannot forget that relationship like you and i have you know it's Oh, it's super awesome thank you so much you know all that that's important for us for our business and i thank you for sharing that um that tip because i think many people who have restaurants don't think they need to be out there networking and that is crucial to the business today even though it's 21st century we live in social media platforms start engaging that's all awesome you know it's just mass media you save money but it really comes down to that community support. You know, what can you do for each other? You know, you do your PR campaigns, you know, you collaborate, you co-work to help each other and engage, drive traffic to each other's website and blogs. So thank you for sharing that human personal touch that we all need to have in our business. Thank you. So what would you say, what would your advice be to those new rookies who are gung-ho about having, you know, starting up a food business or a restaurant or a catering business? You know, what would your advice be to them? You know, because it's important for them to research all this before they just dive into it and then uh, six months later realize that they don't want to get up at four in the morning because, you know, it's too much work. They're not used to doing it and they can't be called out late. Uh, to work because you know somebody didn't come to work and all that stuff so what advice can you share and give these new rookies run <laughs> in all seriousness think about it long and hard it's not all glamour it's long hours make sure you understand the numbers that you're putting into a budget know that they're not going to be right <laughs> um, plan for it plan for those mistakes um, and talk to people who are doing it make sure it's what you want to do uh, I think those are the best pieces of advice that I can give um, really know your neighborhood know who your market is it's once you're in it it's hard to get out of it so you better know what you're getting into first you said passion. Um, have a passion for it. So thank you for all those tips. You know what? I'm very excited because I know you've got something cooking for me in the kitchen because we're going to have me uh, try my hands at what? Spinning a crepe. Oh, my God. I hope I do it well. Well, we'll see. We'll see, you know, because I know it's, it's going to be a very, very interesting thing. So I don't know how well I do in the kitchen, but we'll, we'll find out soon. We'll make so it folks, work for you. Yeah. So, folks, let's go. We're going to head down to the kitchen where I will try my hands at spinning some crepes. We'll see you in the kitchen. I am so excited that we're actually here trying out this nice, what do you call this? It's a crepe griddle. Crepe griddle. Uh, I don't know how I'll do with this because it's all new to me. So we're going to have the expert show me what to do today. So what we're doing today? 
We're making sweet crepes. Okay. So all of our crepes are made either on this electric griddle here in the front mm -hmm. that I've been dragging around with me for 15 <laughs> years and never plugged in until I got the restaurant. Or they're made in the back on two gas crepe griddles that are the same size. This is okay. a Brittany style crepe griddle. Okay. It's got a 15 and three quarter inch diameter. And Brittany? Bretagne. Oh, Brittany! The arm that sticks out into the Atlantic. <laughs> okay, so I made my first crepe when I was probably 10 or 11 years old. Awesome. And we did not make it on this griddle. So who taught you your first crepe? My, my father. Oh, Papa okay. was a chef, and mm -hmm. um, he taught me how to make crepes and okay. everything else that I know when it comes After to After that, cooking. okay. Uh, but the first time I made a crepe on this machine was about four months ago. I had never spun a crepe. And oh. none of the team had ever she's spun a crepe. she's never spun a crepe, can you imagine me doing this today? Wow. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm so for a roll right here, folks. It was not, it's not terribly difficult. It's just, it's all in the wrist. <laughs> All in the wrist. Well, I play tennis, so we'll see if this wrist works today. Fabulous. So here we go. Okay. You pour the sweet batter on. I just can't wait to eat, really. I mean, I'm just enjoying this and we'll make a fool out of myself, and then we'll see what happens later, right? And this is the tough part, the spin. <laughs> okay. And you know I what? If you have somebody things, dizzy, maybe. <laughs> but if you have a little hole, it's no bad a problem. We come back through. We cover it up. Okay. Straight around. Ugh. Nice, thin, even layer. Mm. Does it smell good? Really good. So, so why don't you have smell-o-vision with this high-tech, high-touch? This is awesome smell. It smells like creamy stuff that you just want to go ahead and just put your face in it. Mine know it's not ready. I might just burn my face off. So we'll see what comes next. It's all in the butter, right? Ooh, yummy. So when you're... Checking to make sure it doesn't stick. You want to keep from the side. Okay. So this has to go fast because otherwise it'll burn, yeah. right? Okay. You want to go at a, a decent clip. And you want to make sure you don't have any stickage. So okay. you just run the blade under there nice and flat. And now the flip. I'm going to ask you to take a half a step back. All right. Before I, it, it covers me, right? There okay. You go, she makes it look so easy, right? And we'll see what happens when it comes my turn to do this. I just can't wait. So I'm the just... first one we're going to make is our house specialty. Okay, what's it and called? It's sucre citron. Again? So it's sucre. Okay, what does that mean? Citron. It's sugar and lemon. Okay. So we, can... you saw we did barely a tablespoon, not even a tablespoon of butter there. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of white sugar. Again, barely a tablespoon. Okay. And we sprinkle. So it kind of melts down. It's going to melt in with the sugar and caramelize. Okay. See, I didn't even use the whole tablespoon. Okay. So we just put half, only half side of it? Only on half. Okay. Correct. Okay. All right. And then the famous lemon squisher. You can okay. do this by hand, but these okay. handy dandy little things are wonderful. And we okay. do so many every day mm -hmm. that it's nice. So why do we put lemon um, on top of it? Because I know it's liquid because I'm just wondering, does it actually dissipate or, you know, does it soften the creep or... All of oh, the okay. above, mm -hmm. but we put it on there for flavor. Ha! This is our lemon crepe. Awesome. So we put it awesome. on there for flavor. Okay. Now we're going to fold it in half. Yummy! Uh, 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 and uh. then do a little fan. She makes it look really easy. I'm just afraid I might be wearing this on my head later. Right onto the plate. Are you ready to taste this? Oh, awesome. I, I am. I am. Yummy. All righty. Mm, the smell, the smell, folks. I'm right. sorry. And I'm, always I'm just start sorry. from the center. So why is that we start in the center? That's where all the good stuff is. Oh, well, all those, all those juice. All the lemon and all sugar. All the sugar, the caramelized sugar. Mm, folks. Oh, mm, mm, mm. All right, let me see how I did. Did I do okay? Awesome. Oh, my God. I just went, died and went to heaven. Oh my god, this is awesome. It's light. Light. It's delicate. Mm -hmm. Many of our other crepes aren't light and delicate. Mm -hmm. But this one um, really just is a perfect way to end your meal. Now, from a business point of view, right? So we're doing crepes right here. Crepes. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody who wants to start a business, this is all, you know, when you put something on a plate like this, right? People think it's awesome. It's, you know, um, 
as just milk, sugar, butter. But when you put that on a menu from business marketing point of view, do you actually have to figure out, you know, what's your cost for the butter, for the milk, you know, and all that stuff? How important is that? Sure, absolutely. Uh, whenever you're doing anything on the menu, you need to cost every item out. Right. So from how many crepes come out of a 20-egg batch, wow. so you can figure the individual cost of each crepe, mm -hmm. to the ingredients that fill the crepe, mm -hmm. to the bread and butter that you serve with and don't charge for so when you're serving your salads and your entrees and whatnot. So all of those things are things you have to keep in mind. You have lost leaders, just like at the grocery store. Right, right. You have items that don't cost you a lot yeah. and you charge the going rate. Right. So you have a 10 or 12 or 15% food cost. Um, those are not the lost leaders. The lost <laughs> leaders, I just said that backwards. The lost leaders are the items that everybody wants mm. and you're going to sell for not quite as much of a profit because they right. help bring people in. Right. So this crepe, the citron sucré, is probably about a 12 to 15% food cost. So we make a little money on that. Right. The crepe you're going to make mm. uses an ingredient that just disappeared. <laughs> Um, uses an ingredient that is called a chestnut paste or a chestnut oh, cream. Oh, I love chestnut. Now, see, awesome. I am not a huge fan, but oh, it's a not. very popular item. The most popular item in the in the restaurant, and you don't like it. Well, I wouldn't say most popular, but definitely second or third on the on the dessert list. Popular to me. So absolutely, and okay. um, you're going to make this one, and the chestnut <laughs> paste comes in a really small can, mm -hmm. about that big. So it's paste. It's a it's a com it's a thick paste and okay. we thin it out so we can work with it on the crepe. Okay. And the the cost on a little can of that is about thirty seven dollars. Oh my god! Much more than the cost of a lemon. Of lemon. So I so know on that one we're probably running a fifty percent cost. But it's important to the 50%. menu because wow. Yeah. But it's important to the menu because it's authentic. Right. It's traditional. Mm -hmm. It's a huge part of what we're trying to do here in the French culture. Mm -hmm. And so we want to run it because, and beyond that, people love it. Yeah, exactly. We've got to serve pe what people like. Absolutely. Right? That's why they keep coming back to us. So I know you actually have a little bit of background experience with training and development in the hospitality industry. So maybe you can share with me a little bit a story about probably, you know, the people that you've worked with in this industry, you know, uh, restaurateurs like you, who probably does not take too much time thinking about food costing, like how much their cost is. And when they price their menu, they don't think about it. They just think that, oh, I'm going to make 50%. That work, you know. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. I, When I opened the restaurant a little over uh, three months ago now, not mm -hmm. quite four months, the things that you plan for, the budgeting that you do in advance before you open your doors, and one of those things is what kind of food cost are you going to run? My first two months in operation, the food cost was higher than 50%. And that's okay. Right. You've got to get everybody trained. You've got to make sure they understand how to use the product. You're going to burn bacon. <laughs> You're going to burn bread. Lot, lots of these two. You're going to burn, burn a lot, lot of crates. You're going to waste so a lot of crates. on this whole eating? Absolutely. Okay. So getting to the next step in your business mm -hmm. is taking that food cost and bringing it down from 50% in month one and two to 40%. And from 40% down to 35% and 35% down to whatever your goal is. The standard in the restaurant industry is somewhere between 22 and 32% food cost, depending on the type of establishment that you're operating. So when you work that food cost in next to your labor cost, next to your rent, your utilities, the cost of repairing equipment, yep. you have to make sure there's still money left at the end of the day to pay silly things like taxes. And just to just use it for yourself too, for you know, put it back in the business, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, is there a standard duration for this? Is this a three month period, or it does it differ from one type of food business to the other? Well, it differs from any industry to industry, and it differs with the type of experience. And okay. So you have to figure where your budget is going to be and get closer and closer to that budget as quickly as you can. That makes sense. I mean, it's very important to do the food cost costing folks, especially, you know, in the food industry, because you don't really think about it, you know, the sugar, because you buy them in bulk, so, you know, you don't think about it, because I know I had some experience with catering too. Um, in my business, I used to, you know, buy them by the bulk, rice, you know, uh, flour, sugar, 
And sometimes you don't think about food costing to the teaspoon, and you actually have to, right? Am I right? We, you absolutely do. We have one of our line cooks who is in love with our chocolate mousse, <laughs> and we would make a batch of chocolate mousse, and it would disappear quickly. <laughs> and I would look at the statistics, and I'd say, "We didn't sell that many. What's going on?" And finally, fessed up. Ah. And I said, okay, let's do an exercise. And I had her go through and cost what a batch of chocolate mousse costs to make. And from that, I said, okay, how many servings are we getting every time? And divide that out by what one serving of chocolate mousse costs. Right. Now, she's still addicted. But every time she sneaks the chocolate mousse, she brings me the money and, and <laughs> hands me at cost. Not That's at a sales, but at cost. She hands me the money so that I couldn't resist that's a great tip. I mean, you know, something that you give back. You know, you, you can't help it sometimes working in such a great kitchen, you know. Hey, you want something from the kitchen? Bring your money, right? Okay. Absolutely. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to try to Are do Are you ready? What, I'm, I think I am. Let's see how, how I do with this. All right. For this part of the act, I have to be enhanced higher, <laughs> elevated in a way because, you know, we short people get extra treatment, special treatment, because if not, I might just be wearing this over my head, folks. So, Let's go. All right, you ready? Yeah, super excited. Okay, we're going to spin away. So you're going to let me pour and let those drips go. And then you're going to spin. So it's spin nice, people, even. Spin. We'll see. Okay. Sometimes so it what's, tears. It's okay if that happens. We can fix so it. So what's um, in the uh, mix here? The mix is egg. Uh, let me start over. It's egg, sugar, milk water, okay. flour, a touch of salt. A touch of salt, okay. And we make two batters here at the restaurant. We make a savory batter and a sweet. And our sweet batter is made with all-purpose flour. And our savory batter is a naturally gluten-free. You're good there. You're all done. Yay! Not bad. Not bad, right? Not bad so, at all. We go on to this in a second. Okay. Maybe just a second. Okay. Uh, the savory batter is naturally gluten-free, made with buckwheat and oat flour. Gluten-free. I like gluten-free. All right. Now you Great. can start on that corner. So this is the hard part because I don't want to be wearing this on my head or on her head. And you don't want to so. burn yourself either. Yes. Absolutely. Perfect. Nice and flat all the way under. Doesn't look and like we don't want this to sticking. stick, right? right? So we want right. to try to get everything through. Well, you don't want it to stick when you're trying to flip. Okay. So you want to make sure everything is loose. You're loose. So did you're you see ready this, folks? I'm using two hands. The expert did one. So I don't know. I, don't know. We'll I use two a lot, too. Oh, okay. So it all depends on what angle works best. You're free, so you're ready to flip. <laughs> all right. So flip halfway through here. And Almost either way. a little to the right. There you this go. Way. Right. Perfect. Right there. Up and over. Up and over. Yeah, you I didn't got it. it on my head. I'm happy. You're all good. Now, you're okay, going to make the other specialty crepe, okay. which we were just talking about. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do this part for you. Okay. So we're just going to put a little bit of dark chocolate in the middle. Okay. And too much is too much. You know, it's not more of a good thing. It's just, whoa, rich. Yep. So we did Because you know, the batter is already ahead. rich, and now we're going to be super rich. Okay. And, and this is the best part, chestnut. This is the chestnut cream. And okay. we're just going to dollop it. Okay. Now, when you fold this one, this one's different from the last one. Mm -hmm. There's enough of that ooey gooey chestnut on there. When you fold it, you're gonna fold this way. You like oh. to, you're gonna make a square. So okay. you're just gonna fold right over the all edge the, there. Okay. All four sides. Okay. One. Yep, that, that's enough. There you go. This way. Yep, just like that. Yeah. That way. Who knew Zeph could cook, right? So this is just crafts, people. And this way, right? All good. Okay. So now hang on, because I'm going to help you with this, because this is where it gets tricky. It's taking this one off. Okay. So I'm going to take it off for you. Plus, I don't really don't want her to be wearing this one. It's and really you don't hot. want to either. Yeah. And then Super I'm going to awesome. let you do this part. This crepe is called a Mont Blanc crepe. Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. Okay. The, um, and what's the that tallest mean? mountain in the world, the Mont, Mont Blanc, Blanc, right? Okay. Okay. What is this? So cream. This is chantilly or whipped cream. So you're going to take two nice big mounds and make it look like a mountain right there, right on top. Just put it over. Put it right on the top. One. Okay, that looks like a really baby mountain. So keep going. <laughs> keep on going. Can I just stack it? Absolutely. You? There you go. Now that looks like a mountain. That's good. We're going to make it like a mountain. There you go. 
So, you ready to taste this one? You like chestnuts? Absolutely. Now I need to work. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, you just got to come over to your lunch and try this. <laughs> a little chocolate, a little chestnut, a little, a little whipped chocolate, cream. A little chocolate, a little whipped cream, and open your mouth, folks. Blow on it first. Mmm. <laughs> now, this one's not light. <laughs> This one's mm, not delicate. Mm, this one's really rich awesome. Awesome. and mm. sweet. I feel like after having this, I already have to run in front of the street there, back and forth for about an hour until I get, burn all this. All this that I just ate. It's super duper awesome. Well, then keep super eating. Super duper awesome. So is this one of the favorites in the, in it the is. menu? It is. one on of the, the favorites menu? on the dessert menu. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So... So, um, I'm thinking maybe you'd like to share with our, our audience that, you, uh, I mean, you, your recipe for the better. Is that something that you would Absolutely. get to share? So what we'll do, folks, if you would actually write, uh, a fill out the, um, click on the link in the form in our blog right here, and we will send out that, that recipe card to you, and we'll send you the ingredients for this famous, uh, Yolande's better for her cr cream. So come on, come down to, um, Yolande's Bistro on Orange Street in New Haven, 99 Orange Street, New Haven, Yolande's Bistro and Creepery, and try this Mont Blanc. Well right? done! Thank you, folks. And um, is there anything you would like to share with our audience? I, you know, regarding the, the recipe well, that you're I going eat. to so regarding the recipe that you will get, I will caution you one thing about making a crepe at home. You obviously don't have the crepe griddle. That's a good tip. You can use, first thing is, refrigerate your batter overnight. Always. Mm. It'll always make a better crepe. Why is that? It, you need to let the flour absorb all the liquids in the egg. Okay. It'll give you a smoother crepe. You won't ruin as many. We always make our batter the night before for the next day. Okay. And second, a plain old Teflon pan will work. In the restaurant world, we use these aluminum ones, but the Teflon will work. And you can use either size, whatever size you have, you can use. <laughs> And it's still in the wrist, but instead of this way, you're swirl swirling it this way. Now, okay. if you put on a, a Teflon plated um, uh, pan like this, do you have to put anything on it to kind of like not make it stick? Because I know sometimes it can. You know, it's always the best practice to take a tiny little bit of vegetable oil on a paper towel and rub the pan for the first one only. Okay. Once you've made your first one, you're good to go. Awesome. Well, thank you for the tip, and we are looking forward to seeing you guys here at Yolan's Bistro and Free, 99 Orange Street, New Haven, Connecticut. Until then, we will see you at the next episode. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching ZevZev TV, the show that brings you a dash of passion to the perfect blend of ingredients to your success in business and in life. See you later. Bye. Au revoir.